Hello and welcome to Tools in the Shed, a podcast powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into car stuff that's caught our eye this week. I'm James and with me is Richard. Hello. Who's been dreaming of green lights to the horizon. And Matt, who's been looking Hi. at a new arrival set to rejuvenate a critical part of the new car market. Yeah. And we'll update you on everyone's favourite loopy multi-billionaire in this week's Musquatch. So stay with us. But first, once again, happily, we've had some uh, feedback. Oh, yeah. And Greg Wallace, he got in touch a couple of times, but his first one was pretty much soon as the uh, podcast was posted. And he saw last week's podcast go up just as he was knocking off and heading for beer time, as well as some fish and chips. And he said he'd have to watch it over a cup of coffee in the morning. So that was good. And I know Richard gave him a a kind of verbal pat on the back and and said thank you you for the Mm. feedback. So that was very nice. Mm. We also got a quick uh, piece of input from uh, Canis Dominici. Now, that, as I make it, is Latin for Sunday ageing. Right. Is so it right? Either he works at the Sunday Age, or <laughs> he, he just does. sees that that you know seventh day as a time to. Or actually, he's just yeah. got an enviable name. <laughs> yeah. Now he thinks we belong in the Stone Age, yeah. uh, largely because he wasn't impressed by our approach to the impending update of Android Auto. Right. Uh, mainly because we're a bit ham-fisted because we're mostly Apple CarPlay uh, people. Yes. So he thought, oh come on, you know, get out of the cave. Look. I got to say, our guiding principle is it's okay to learn, <laughs> right? And we will we'll do better. Yeah. We will do better. It's okay to learn. So and it's it w- okay to be different. Yeah, I mean, fifty percent of the we em- smartphone market is Android. So yeah. Yeah. we embrace difference. We're just not part podcast. of that fifty percent. Thank do. God. All right. And now, Greg. <laughs> Sorry. Greg. Greg got back in touch. Greg, uh, oh, yeah. after he'd had the morning coffee and what yeah. have you, he actually consumed the podcast, which is fantastic. A couple of days later. Mm. He's wondering about EV sales because we, oh, yeah. we discussed EVs last week. Now, I did a bit of digging and year-to-date numbers, I thought he wanted to know, you know, how are EV sales going? Mm-hmm. So year-to-date, private passenger vehicles, so no utes, no heavy trucks, none of that, just private passenger vehicles and not fleets. Mm. Um, year-to-date so far, petrol-powered cars, for 54,321. Yep. Hybrids, 2,187. Most of that would be Camry, mm. yes. maybe with a bit of Corolla in there. Diesel, 734. Mm. Electric slash PHEV, 123. Mm. So that's 0.21% of the private market, and most of those will be PHEV. Hey, what's really interesting about that is the private diesel market is... Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so then I dug out the numbers for individual models. So it's Jag I-Pace, 47. BMW i3, 27. BMW i8, 8. Renault Zoe, 2. The rest would be Outlanders and Ionic, uh, yeah. maybe, mm. something like that. And Tesla doesn't report to the Federal Chamber where we get our sales numbers, so oh, yeah. it, it's hard to factor them into the whole mix. Yep. But if you look at the whole market, it's 0.03 of the whole market is EV, PHEV. Mm. So not even pure electric vehicles. That That isn't mm. broken out. So it's tiny, um, but you've got to say there's not much to choose from just yet. So, yeah. no. you know, you've got the Kona Electrics just arrived, Leafs coming, Audi e-tron, Kia e-Niro, Merck EQC, Tesla Model 3. There's a lot of new product coming. The yep. government Eves. in this election eve seems to be, you know, tuning into the whole yeah. electric thing. Um, so as a point of principle, Greg, who in the interim had come down with a dose of the flu, yeah. Greg Wallace, our commenter, yeah. um, with nothing better to do, arm wrestled his local BMW dealer into a drive-away deal on a new 2019 BMW 320D. Oh, yeah. It's white, right? So, probs no uh, metallic paint. Yeah. And he got to $73,200. So, the recommended retail price for that car is 67900 So, he's got drive-away yep. at 73200 yep. Okay. Kona Electric's uh, retail price recommended 64490 So, Greg's saying, look... I don't think the EV Kona is going to do uh, big numbers. Mm. I love Greg. Greg, just yeah, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a bit, I'm a bit crook. I've got nothing to do. He's. I'm just going to arm wrestle my local dealer into a good deal on a car. I probably have no intention of buying. Imagine yeah. how good a deal Greg would do when he was feeling well. He's actually well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right on it. Wow. You so give it Greg. a go, Greg. <laughs> Be like Greg. <laughs> so thank you, Greg. Thank you very much for that <laughs> feedback. Now. Richard, I've got to say, yes. mm-hmm. um, in, in my youth, there was a challenge. Mm. Pitwater, Pitwater Road DY. Oh, yes. There's probably uh, 15 sets of traffic lights yep. yes. within about oh, half a kilometre. Yes. And if you got the full-on green run yep. from 1 to 15, 
you didn't get a prize, but you felt very, very happy about that. Now, you've been investigating a technology that has the potential to create that special feeling on a regular basis. Mm. That's right. It's an actual term describing that that runner green lights. It's called the green wave. The green wave. The oh. green wave. Everyone loves to get That's a... not Richard Di Natale <laughs> out of the car just giving everyone a cheerio. <laughs> no, it's not. It's uh, it's when you get a string of green lights just by coincidence. Right. Okay. So what Audi's hoping to do is to take away the coincidence and make it planned. Yeah, right. Um, the US has had this technology in Audi since 2016. It's now being rolled out throughout Europe in all Audi models from the A1 and right up to the A8. Um, how it works is, is that your car talks to the traffic lights. The traffic lights tell your car uh, if it's still green. How it stays um, been. And how, uh, how yeah. it stays. <laughs> how are you going? How oh, you going, mate? Good. Not yeah, yeah. Good. What are you up to? Just are you green or red? Yeah. Somewhere in between. Well, I'm green at the moment, but I'm going to be red in 25 seconds. So it tells right. you how many more seconds it's going to be green for, and your car will speed up or slow down so that it gets it. Um, so potentially what this means is that you'll never hit another red light. And if you do hit a, hit a red light, mm. which will happen, um, it, te- it does a countdown. Um, and it tells you you've got three seconds left. But where this technology is going, that eventually when cars become autonomous, mm-hmm. right, cars will, whole traffic will slow down so that they never have to stop. Right. It com- completely. Um, also, it means that, you know, it's midnight, you're sitting in your car you're at a red light. There's no other cars in opposite direction. Yeah, right? sure, And you're sure. just sitting there waiting for nobody. We've all had that moment. Because the thing yeah. that comes to my mind is for every green light, there's a red light. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of coordination yeah. has got to be the next step. Because if, you, if you're trying to get that green wave, yeah. there's a whole bunch of people getting the red bullet you know, totally. that, yeah. that aren't going anywhere. And this is where it gets really exciting. So it's one o'clock at night and you're driving home from wherever you've been. Um, the traffic light will see your car coming. It'll look in both directions and it'll go green for you. Wow. So it's great. Nice. And so nice. it means that you wouldn't just sit there waiting for nobody. That's amazing. So I've asked, I've asked Audi Australia, um, you know, when we'll be getting it, you know, in Australia here. Um, they haven't got back to me yet, but um, when we know, we'll let you Cause know. Because you've got to have the light. Mm stuff, the light infrastructure that's able that's to right. talk to the Audi. So that's a big deal. And the, mm. Exactly. And the reason why it's been um, out in the US for so long is because they're pretty much every single city and even tiny town is built on a grid. Yeah. So it's really, really easy to, to build that infrastructure into the yeah. traffic light systems and the infrastructure. Um, the car tech is quite easy. It's just yeah. trying to get the infrastructure to talk to the cars. Uh, Europe's a bit different. It's got more higgledy-piggledy roads, and I, I have a feeling that Australia's going to be quite difficult as well. We've got higgledy-piggledy roads here oh, too. And, right. you know, yeah. it's not like we're forward-thinking when it yeah. comes to infrastructure yeah. and things that might make things more efficient or safer for people. So, Are they piggledy-higgledy or, or <laughs> higgledy Anyway. Piggledy. Yeah, Piggledy, yeah. Piggledy. Oh, they annoy me, by the way. <laughs> anyway, the system is called traffic light information and it will become either part of standard on cars or part of a pack in, in Audi models. So, okay. Richard, you mentioned everything from A1 up to the yep. limos and things. Yep. Does that mean they have the capability to do it? It's just flicking a switch or retrofitting something or they're just all capable? I'm not right. 100% sure. I'd, it'll be all new Audi models from 2020 I in see. Europe. Right. I guess so right. I have a feeling that it'll be built in at the factory uh, right. and software related. Yeah. So technology like this is coming a long way. Yep. I've, I've driven a Hyundai or a Genesis product in Korea that has sat nav that will slow down for a speed camera because yep. it knows where the speed camera is. It'll yep. slow down to the speed limit and then take off to whatever you had Back it set on before. Yeah. Yep. And this is just part of Yep. the whole movement towards tech running the show uh-huh. and you just being part of it. Yeah, you're kind of a passenger. We're moving mm. towards being passengers and not drivers, I feel. I wonder, mm. I wonder what happens, though, when the police or their contractors realise that it's pointless to put out a speed camera Yeah, yeah. because they're so easily detected. Yeah. How are they then, in fact, going to detect speed when cars are completely autonomous? It's like Big Brother will control all the car's yeah. speeds. Yeah. Absolutely, and how long before your car reports you? So you don't need a speed camera. At just the end of the month, it goes, yeah, James was speeding on the 29th and the 3rd. He was going five yeah. over. Yeah. yeah, Singing oh like a bird. <laughs> That's a car fearful. just got into the box. And, That's yeah. a fearful Wouldn't place in the up, future. It? There'd be wow. a way around it. I anyway, know guys who get around that. It's mm. an interesting one to consider. <laughs> so thank you, Richard. Thank you. Um, so Matt, you yes. have been, we're, we're going to talk product, but it's almost a bigger conversation yeah. around a particular part of the market that's that's had a big injection of new product, and it's probably the biggest you could you could imagine. Talk us talk us through that. So we're talking about the new Toyota Rav Four. Yep, and we're talking about the mid-sized SUV segment, which is still one of the most popular segments in the market in yep. terms of sales of new cars in 
pretty much every year for the last five. Yep. Uh, and the Toyota RAV4, it's now in its fifth generation. Uh, 25 years after that tiny little, tiny little one, three door yeah. jigger came Cute out. Though. That yes. first one was super cool. Yeah. It was cool. And yeah. this new one is not small. It is, well, it's not actually, mm. it's no bigger than the previous version in terms of length, but it is wider and it's more practical and mm. it's got more interior space and it's built on Toyota's new. TNGA, which is Toyota New Generation Architecture. Uh, it's built on that platform, which is also under the Camry and the Corolla and the CHR and the Prius. And what we've come to expect of that platform, as we've found in comparison tests and just in reviews in general, is that it makes for a very good drive experience. And that's yep. definitely the case okay. with the new RAV4. Okay. Um, but it also allows Toyota to take leadership in that segment with hybrid power. And that's obviously... As we were saying, you know, electric is only a small part of the market. Hybrid is a pretty minute part of the market as well. But they're hoping that up to 40% of the new RAV4 sales this year will be hybrid. Hybrid, mm. yep. Um, and it should be. I mean, it should even be higher than that because six of the 11 variants you can choose from yes. are hybrid. Yes. And you can get two-wheel drive or you can get all-wheel drive. Um, and, of course, there are still regular petrol four-cylinder engines there is no diesel this time around right and the top spec model really quite oddly is a 2.5 litre non-hybrid auto like mm. just a four-cylinder mm. auto so okay. it's, they've they've sort of and but it's all-wheel drive of course yeah. but it sort of uh goes against the conventional wisdom of yeah. the hybrid being mm. more expensive premium because yeah. toyota has done so much of the heavy lifting in terms of oh, yeah. uh, changing attitudes towards electrification of cars mm -hmm. mm. through their hybrids prius as the icebreaker and all that stuff so it's relatively painless or it's not scary you yeah. know what i mean there's a reluctance on people's mm. behalf to think about oh how do i plug it in and yeah. am i going to run out of charge the hybrid is the easy way in to yeah. the whole thing and this is this was the point that was made at the launch is that you don't have to worry about a plug you don't have to think about it yeah. it's just it, it's just integrated and it just makes it easy and to save fuel i was in a uber the other day and the guy was in a hybrid corolla and he just couldn't talk more highly of it because yeah, yeah. it saved him so much fuel yeah. Yeah. and that's why there are so many camry uh, taxi cabs and, yeah. and the whole bit yeah and toyota australia is still struggling with demand for toyota camry hybrid models uh corolla hybrid has exceeded their expectations yeah. um, and i expect that the new rav4 will do exactly the same i mean on test like sure it might not have been completely representative of what most people will do there were two of us in the car uh, we were driving it uh, as though we were trying to get a bit of an impression of the car so maybe a little bit more aggressive than some people might but even so uh, on a on a trip from the Adelaide CBD out through the suburbs in traffic out into the Adelaide Hills so that's about two and a half minutes <laughs> uh, it was a bit more than that okay. but, uh, it was more like probably an hour and a half of yep. driving. Yep. Um, we On the dashboard, it was saying that it was using five and a half litres per hundred. Wow. That's I mean, good. that's very good, yeah. That's I, phenomenal for a family SUV. Yeah. Like... That is phenomenal. I went to the launch of the previous generation uh, RAV4 and that oh. had a off-road component. Yes. Um, was there an off-road component in there, this one? There was an off-road component. How did the hybrids deal with that? Uh, the hybrids were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, the the highlight of the off-road component section was the Edge model, which is designed to be a little bit more focused on off-roading. Yep. It's got a different body kit yeah. and treatment yep. and uh, different wheels and that sort of stuff. And I actually wasn't driving it. I was driving a uh, entry-level, uh, well, GXL, I think it was, uh, all-wheel drive version. And there was this one particular bump where I may have tore a little bit of plastic out of the undercarriage. But <laughs> it's just, you know, yeah. a lot of these cars, they're <clears throat> not real four-wheel drives. Yeah. We shouldn't really think of them as real four-wheel drives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have, like, aerodynamic plastics underneath to help it slip through the air yeah. a little bit more efficiently. And that all yeah. adds to the efficiency thing. But it's not a serious four-wheel drive. Yeah. And they, I mean, the test loop sort of highlighted that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I suppose the, the thing, of, you know, our very own Marcus Kraft, you yeah. know, that, who heads up the adventure section for, for Cars Guide, yep. um, will say that that kind of all-wheel drive as opposed to, you know, centre diff, diff locks, yeah. kind of off-roading four-wheel drive is still great when mm. you're on dirt, pitted kind of road you're going to the campground yeah you're going to your favorite surf spot mm -hmm. you're, you're doing whatever mm -hmm. it's extremely helpful you're, yeah you're way better than two-wheel drive yeah so it's just 
being sensible, I suppose, about how you use it. Exactly. And the, the thing with the RAV4 range, now the, the Edge has a mechanical all-wheel drive system which can split torque up to 50-50, but it's usually in front-wheel drive. Yeah. And then there's the hybrid versions with all-wheel drive which have a, uh electric all-wheel drive system. So they've got a different motor on the rear axle and it can sort of jostle as you need it. Yeah. Um, and it's it's quite clever. We The weather was... Um, gross on the second day right. and we did a few acceleration uh, tests from a standstill in the wet yep. and you could feel the mechanical system work working just like bang and it's like wow. okay you've got all wheel drive and so, then and on a more superficial level I actually really like the way the new RAV looks yeah uh, it's a little tougher mm-hmm. it's got a distinct personality where yep. it was kind of generic Toyota before yep. in line with the way Toyota's going on design it's it's got something to it yeah exactly uh, it stands out I what do you reckon? I reckon, <clears throat> sorry, frog in my throat. Um, the boot looks enormous. And it, that's, the wheel archer seemed really recessed and low. Yes. Yeah. It, well, it's huge. It's 580 litres, which we know, if you don't speak car boot language, mm. um, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but it's big. Uh, and you can, and the, the biggest or the best thing about it is that you've got extra length, but also the shape of the boot aperture. It's like quite large. Yeah. So it's not difficult to lift something big and heavy up over like there's no big lip to lift it over yeah. and it's a nice flat area and it's low so it's easy to put it, they've just thought yeah, of yeah. this stuff and i guess um you know we've been critical of toyota in the past with their uh, other tnga products particularly the corolla because it's just basically got no boot it's got um, a very small boot but this is like this is marketing strategy in my mind they've gone oh we've got a corolla oh you really like the way the corolla drives oh well you, you, oh, you know, you've got two kids, probably going to be a bit tight. Well, we've got this $10,000 more expensive RAV4 over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's got yeah. a massive boot. So yeah. I, I think they've uh, they've obviously thought of this. And, yeah, it's it's um, well, we, one we, of those cars where you go, this is important. You speaking know? of test drive, I mean, we had one commenter on the review. I don't mm-hmm. know whether you caught it, but he said he went in, did uh, just the test drive, good as sold. Yeah. Like, that was it. Done. Yep. Took wow. a couple of minutes behind the wheel and realised uh, it was the right car. We also had a commenter on YouTube say, uh, "Great review, but this guy gets on my nerves." So <gasps> you right. talking about yeah. you? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, that's deadly accurate as well. Yeah, I suppose that's polite. You should have seen. You should see the comments <laughs> I get. <laughs> All right, now <laughs> moving on, we'll we'll move away from that nastiness <laughs> and we'll we'll stick in the garage yep. as to <clears throat> vehicles that we've been driving through the week, as opposed to a specific product launch. This is yep. what we've been living with. Yes. And Richard, we'll kick it off with you. You've been uh, living the Italian SUV dream. Tell us about that. The Italian dream. I've been driving the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio or the Alfa Romeo Stelvio yep. Q. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a family test on it, so it's a little bit different from the test that you did uh, recently in the same same SUV, so JC. Is it is um, it the family with Terry Berry? Oh. It's um, it's it's a whole family. We're not doing a video okay. review, but I'm getting everybody into it. Okay. Um, my wife loves it. Really? Um, but she's a sucker for styling, and it's it is. Is beautiful. Like Alfa Romeo styling almost makes me want to cry. Like, oh. like it's so beautiful inside and out. Okay. Um, but in terms of driving dynamics, um, it, wow, it's been a really hard car to live with. That, that mm-hmm. suspension is really firm. Yeah. Um, the 20 inch 40 profile um, uh, uh, tires are, are really, really, you know, low profile. Um, and the potholes in our area have been, you know, even more accentuated. It's been that's been difficult to live with. Yeah. Um, doors don't seem to open wide enough um, in terms of getting kids in, in and out. Yeah. Um, giant boot, that's really good. Cargo net in there as well, which has been fantastic. Um, and, and in terms of performance, wow, you know that three liter twin turbo V6 is incredible. Yeah. Three hundred seventy five kilowatts. Um, it doesn't sound very good though. And this, JC, you brought this up as well. I did. Um, it sounds. It does sound a bit subdued and dieselish. Okay. Um, so you get into like say a, a competitor like a GLC, um, you know AMG, oh. um, and just just sitting at the traffic lights, they go. Bop, 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 yeah. bop, bop. This sounds like nothing. Yeah. Right. Um, and you really can only get good sound out of it when you ring its neck. And it's odd yeah. because the Julia 
you know, yeah. the sedans, oh, same yeah. drivetrain. It sounds different. Mm. I don't it. know what's happened, but there's something is. They might have changed. gone. We've got to be sensible with the exhaust on the SUV. Yeah, maybe you might have babies in there and uh, potentially. Like, um, but I just don't know if you'd step up to the queue if you wanted to be sensible. The yeah, the, the, the Julia point. Quadrifoglia was fantastic. It felt tight and pinned down, and the sound even travelling through. We went, we, at the launch, we went through some like tiny sl- seaside sort of, you know, towns, and you know, four or five, you know. Julia Quadrifoglio was ro- rolling through the plaza was just loud. Like yeah. in first gear, it goes, yeah. this silence. Not until you get up to, you know, 5,000 RPM that it really starts to, you know, make a noise. And yeah. you don't want to drive that hard on a suburban street. No. It's just dangerous. No. So um, you can put right. it into race mode, which, you know, we only did to sort of check the sound of it. Um, and it that's great. But then again, you don't want to drive in race mode in the streets either. No. It's just... Look, I, I drove a Macan home last night, uh, Macan S, Porsche mm. Macan, and on the same road, same potholes, and the whole thing felt a lot more relaxed and um, well put together. Yeah. Um, the, the Alpha does feel a little bit loose. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like I want to go around with a spanner and tighten everything up. All or, right. Well, look, we, mm. we better move on because, and so keep your eye out for that. Yep. And Richard mentioned it. It's a family review. So That's we right. have a family section on the Cars That's God it. website where you're much more focused on things like kids yep. and just family life, mm. getting the groceries in, yep. doing the run for the school drop-offs, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So it will have that kind of focus. So look out for that. Yeah. And Matt, you've yeah. been driving, funnily enough, as the ute guru, you've been in a ute. Tell yes. us about this one. This one was a Chinese ute and mm. not a great wall. Uh, all right. It yep. was the new LDV T60 Trail Rider. Oh. Now, the Trail Rider... Uh, is that kind sounds like of the cheap jeans I used to buy, you know, when I was a <laughs> kid. You couldn't have the Levi's, you can have the trail riders. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's right. I'm sure LDV will appreciate Mom. it. <laughs> Mom. Um, Mom. But kind of, no, kind of, you know how you go to a country town and you go to the uh, Chinese restaurant and there's all the Chinese options that you would expect, like yes. a Mongolian lamb or a chicken chow mein or something Ooh, yes. like that. Sweet and sour pork. But then on the side, you might have something mm. like lamb chops. Oh, yes. So mm. this is... This is As a dumpling? the automotive Would... equivalent of that menu because it's got Australian yep. tuning, an mm. Australian flavour to it, yes. but it's Chinese made. So right. it's um, it's basically got a Walkinshaw retuned suspension. So Walkinshaw, if you're not aware of them, have also done things like HSVs and Mega hot, power Commodores. hot Commodores yeah. for yep. years. Yep. So they know their way around a set of springs and shocks. Um, and in this case, it seems that they do know their way around a set of springs and shocks because it was quite an impressive drive yeah. experience. Oh, I've cool. got to say, I'll, I'll yeah. second that because I took a steer of it um, just to experience the car. Yep. And we were talking about it last night that uh, it's a, quite a revelation. Yeah. That you expect it to be somehow rudimentary, not confidence inspiring. Yeah. It was exactly the opposite. It was really pretty good. Yeah. Walkinshaw didn't do the engine though, did they? They didn't do the engine, wow. um, okay. sadly. That would have been amazing. Uh, yeah, an LS1 under there would be Excellent. Yep. <laughs> uh, instead, it does have a 2.8 litre turbo diesel, which uh-huh. has less power and less torque than almost everything in the segment. And it yeah. feels a little bit underdone in that regard. Mm. So maybe that's the next step for LDV on their uh, journey towards constant improvement. Mm. Uh, but I've, I've said it to uh, Mal, I've said it to you, I, I would have the LDV... Based on, I've, I've done nearly 1,500 kilometres in it over the last week, and mm. I would have it over some of the other big name mutes out there because it just yep. seems a more comfortable and livable and enjoyable experience. Yeah. Apart from oh. the media screen. Yes. The media screen sets the standard in the segment in terms of size. Wow. It's a 10 inch touchscreen. Great. And yeah, it's got Apple yeah. CarPlay and it's got Android Auto. But I was buggered if I could figure out how to make it work because <laughs> it was. The usability of it is just rubbish. Is it in right. English? Uh, it was in English, yes. um, but the menus uh, laid out so poorly. Mm. It's like they're focused on just having a really nice color palette yeah, and right. not the actual yeah, right. user experience. Yeah. But that's um, apparently it's uh, a company in China's design and they are working on improvements for Thank it. Goodness. So. Also setting the benchmark for size is that the tailgate oh, uh, yeah. with... <laughs> With Trail Rider written across the back of it. It, it is a large sticker. 
Uh, it's a novel. large sticker. It's a novel. It, it you only... get to read a lot of words across. The... If you're in traffic behind a trail rider, <laughs> yeah. you're not short of yeah. something to read. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. I yeah. couldn't put it down. <laughs> and I, mean... I, st- I went start to finish in one sitting. <laughs> They're trying to uh, brand it and try and get a new brand yeah. out there. So I can understand why they've been so and it, looks, yeah. it looks decent. You oh, know, yeah. It's, it's yeah. very much of that dual cab you kind of look. Yeah. It's not as yeah. if it's awkward or, or yeah. ungainly in any way. I, I, mean, I think it's pretty attractive. It's a more handsome ute than a lot of the others out there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was pretty impressed with it. All right, well, moving on, I'll just quickly touch on a car that I've been driving during the week, which was a special edition version of the VW Golf R. Oh, yeah. So we're talking 200 only uh, for this market, so very much limited. So it's 61990 is its recommended retail price. A lot of money for a Golf. That's about a 5K uh, ask, higher than your, your standard Golf. Yep. For that, you get an Akrapovich exhaust. Mm. Um, Akrapovich, Czech Republic, or wherever they're from? Czech. Yep. Czech, is yep. it? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so they're the exhaust specialists on motorbikes and cars. Mm. And whatever. Yeah. So you get mm. your tricky exhaust, mm. some black rims, a premium stereo, a few other bits and pieces. It's probably, I don't know, you'd have to add the actual mm. numbers up. So you get some more stuff for your more for your extra dough. Yep. You still get that you know, sub five seconds, zero to 100 type performance. And it's such an enjoyable car oh. to drive. Uh, it's really composed and beautifully smooth. Everything flows together so nicely. It just screams, this is a well-engineered car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I can second that. I spent the night uh, with that car. Uh, yeah. That sounded weird. Hang but on a second. Um, uh, it was... Have you- Washed it afterwards. It was just, it's just one of those cars where you get it and go, oh, I want this. Yeah. I just want yeah, this. It's really good. It's a lot of money though. 61, yeah. did you say? It's heaps of dough. 61. Yeah. So you've got to be ready for it. It's like a Focus RS type yep. competitor. Yeah. It's in that that very high end of the hot hatch kind of uh, range. So yeah, if you're really committed to it, you're going to get a great car. Yeah. If you're and cough and up those dollars. the exhaust, I, I sort of expected the exhaust to be uh, maybe rude. But because like I, a step change yeah, in terms mm, of its noise. Yeah, and I, I yeah. sort of expected it to be worse than it was. Yeah. Like I expected more drama. But it's when you it's when you have the moment where yeah. you go through the tunnel and mm. you just pop it down a gear and oh, have a great. listen. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Wow. It's heaps of fun. Great. Good car. Now, speaking of fun, we're going to investigate certain machinations through the week <gasps> from everyone's favourite loopy multi-billionaire, as I said, in Musquatch. Right, so, mm. look, first up, Twitter. Mm. Oh, fancy uh, that. <laughs> it's not as if uh, Elon has been off the Twitters. He's yeah. still on there. The f- it's all about SpaceX, though. He's very much focused on SpaceX at the moment, and he's been teasing Jeff Bezos um, from Amazon fame about his proposed moon lander. Yep. So what is it about billionaires and space flight? So here they are, the, the richest people on the globe all want to get off this yeah. world and yes. go to another one. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys understand that? I understand it. You do? It goes back to 1600. So back in 1600 and 1500s, the explorers were all sponsored by massive wealthy um, landowners, emperors, kings, queens, and just nobility. So this kind of philanthropy is Uh about progressing... Yes. Civilization and, going, and our understanding of ourselves. It's nah. about a le- no. It's about a legacy, and it's ah. about I discovered other worlds, colonized. It's I colonization. See, see, it's like colonialism a, all over again. It's a blank. It's a dick waving competition. Oh, it's that is as what well. It is. Oh, it's absolutely that too. It's, yeah, and it, it was back in sixteen hundred as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. And we've got Africa and Australia now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's right. Yes. What have you got? <laughs> no, You've got, only got Brazil, Portugal. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Try harder. Exactly. <laughs> America. Yes. Oh, and you've got East Timor. So what? <laughs> um, all right. So anyway, Twitter, the, the short story is that Twitter has focused, has mm. pivoted, and he's gone very much on spacing. So yeah. Tesla seems to be a bit of a backgrounder on uh, Twitter at the moment. So maybe mm. some fingers have been burned. Uh, then, look, I went to, to a website called The Richest. And it was just a reminder on the ridiculously expensive things that Elon Musk owns. Yeah, okay. All right? It was really interesting. You might remember that back in 1999, he bought a McLaren F1. So when he was just getting some success in the PayPal era, yep. he bought a McLaren F1. He put nearly 18,000 kilometers on it, but stacked it. Um, <laughs> allegedly uninsured, showing off to his PayPal co-founder, uh, Peter Thiel. 
Right. Oh, so God. it then moved on, and it's remained in California, allegedly. But he bought that. He's, so he's, he's a car person. Yeah. And it reminded me also that he bought the amphibious Lotus Esprit from the spy who yes. loved him. From James Bond. Yeah, yes. from yeah. that James Bond yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. So he's got this car thing. He paid yeah. nearly a million bucks for it. Wow. And that was some time ago. Yeah. Now, he's also bought this year so far five Bel Air mansions. So he's spent about $60 million on five, that. Five? In the yeah. same In the same. In suburb. the same. He's just out there buying real are estate. They, are they next to each other? Could be. Maybe he's making a compound. That's oh. his lair. Yeah, and then he already owns um, a twenty-five million dollar pile he bought, you know, in twenty sixteen, right. and several others, including his primary residence, which he bought in twenty twelve for seventeen million dollars. So he owns a lot yeah. of premium Los Angeles real estate. Yeah, um, he was recently given a forty thousand dollar diamond and ruby ring <laughs> by Julia uh, Jeweler uh, Ben Yang for being a top bloke. You know, for just Elon, thank you for all you do. You're, wow, you're, you're saving us. You're saving the planet. There's you're special. Of, there's lots of good people out you're there. You're a good Don't bloke. give them all the ring. Yeah. Like. It's amazing. You'll probably see footage of the ring. It's got the Tesla logo on it um, in diamonds and rubies around it. It's uh, amazing. That'd um, be hard to sell, though. With he the also, logo. and this is a bone of contention with yeah. a lot of uh, Elon Musk watches, mm-hmm. he owns a Gulfstream 650ER. So that's a $70 million not-so-green private, oh, private yes. plane. Yeah. Right? yeah. So... What are you going to do? Get on a solar-powered boat and and travel internationally? It's a tricky one, but he's got a Gulfstream. But yeah. not, he's not solar-powering his rockets either. That's so, a true point. Like, no, that's true. A solar-powered rocket? <laughs> I don't know whether it would get out there. I, I Once it's it. out there, it just yeah. keeps going. Yeah, well, if it was a mission <laughs> to the right. sun, it'd be fine. That's right. But if you're heading away <laughs> from it. Imagine the solar be... array that you'd need to yeah. get that blast off now. <laughs> Exceptional. So there's that. Um, also... CNBC has been looking at mind-reading computers. What? Right? So this is where your thoughts are actually downloadable what into a computer. James? And it reminded me, and I'd, I'd forgotten about it, I don't know whether you guys are aware of it, Elon co-founded a company called Neuralink. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. So he's, to quote, it to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain. Right. So uh, he uses a material called graphene which is a single atom thick layer of carbon to add a digital third layer above the cortex in your skull. Right? This is the vision right. that you have this. It involves some pretty horrendous surgery. So you have this yeah. third layer put into your noggin um, and it's to potentially help disabled, disabled people. Mm-hmm. It's to do super immersive kind of VR type stuff. Um, it's symbiotic with artificial intelligence and so Elon says it's all for the good. I think it's to control our mind. Totally, um, it's yeah. the bigger plan. So Oof. anyway, that he's saying that that's this is progressing, and we're going to hear more from Neuralink very soon. It's like that classic. He's not the superhero; he's the supervillain. I know, like Neuralink. Yeah, oh, we and Neuralink seen... even sounds like a sci-fi doomsday a company. High bandwidth inter- interface to the brain. <gasps> Oh, wow. no I thanks. Mean, this is part of, because Elon also had, part of that company also uh, has a sideline or wants to have a sideline in After You Die. Uh, That's right. Uploading your consciousness into like a hard drive and then implanting that in, say, a robot or an AI. Yeah. So that, you know, I might pass away, but you could still have Richard Berry. He might just be, you know, Live forever in a bobblehead toy on your desk. It's cool. kind of like but, um, yeah. Astro Boy. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Made real. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm actually into that. I like that idea. (laughs) Becoming Astro Boy. Yeah. With rocket legs. Yeah. That would be cool. Watch me take off. Now, the the final and creepiest part of Musk Watch this week is a deep fake video that uh, Richard unearthed. Now, the history of deep fake, it's basically what uh, former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher used to uh, famously refer to as video nasties. Yeah. Um, So it's the, oh, it's porn, right? Yeah. Um, but there's no such connection here. Uh, it's young Elon freaking everybody out. Oh, my God. And those Can, watching on yeah. YouTube will be seeing it behind us, and it's disturbing. And, and even if you're not watching on YouTube, you should uh, you should definitely look at the YouTube <laughs> version Absolutely. of the show. Deep fake Elon Musk, Deep and it'll come up on YouTube. Musk. 
it's amazing because it's not just a superimposed face, Elon superimposed face on the baby's face. What it is, it's the computer actually going, okay, so if Elon was looking yeah. sad and happy or um, upset or crying, it makes that face. Augmenting yeah. the face. Augments the face. Absolutely. It's incredible. It's which, very odd. And it poses major concerns, um, you know, for security in the future. You could yeah. have, you know, a future um, president of the United States declaring nuclear war on That's Russia. Right. Mm-hmm. That's and right. now it looks completely like the president of the United States, but it's a faked. Yes. You know, I mean, it, would it would a would another country sort of take a you know chance and go? Oh, maybe it is a fake. Or it'd, would be, they it'd be it? like it'd be like Mal Flynn saying sensible things. Yeah, you know, it'd be, it would <laughs> yes. be you, you'd be incredulous. Yeah, but you would have to believe the, <laughs> yeah. the evidence Poor of Mal. your own eyes. That's Poor true. Mal. Yeah, huh. uh, but <laughs> true. <laughs> but so the Bloomberg Model Three production tracker at five eight zero two. So down a couple of hundred, yep. but still pushing that six thousand uh, number. Yep. I remember when we were down at three hundred, three thousand. It was yeah. so it's up yeah. there. It's yeah. now chugging along. Yeah. The sausage machine um, is, is pushing out the same number each week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The share price is down about ten bucks. So from last week, two forty four down to two thirty two. Mm. So I, I don't know quite what's driven that, but it's on this decline, um, mm. which is interesting. People want maybe more results. I think more, maybe it's reality that's maybe pushing it. Down. Maybe that's setting in. Mm. So that's uh, that's Musk Watch for this week, and I oh. think that's our podcast for this week. We've reached the finish line. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. And thank you, Matt. Thank you. And thanks, as usual, to our production wizard, Mr. Pritchard. You can join the conversation by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. You can listen to and watch us on YouTube, so jump into the comments with our regulars and be heard. If you're enjoying Tools in the Shed, please let other people know and please rate and review us on iTunes. It helps other people find the podcast. Until next week, the long-predicted flood of Chinese automotive brands seems to at last be making an impact in this market, and they show quality. Of course, low is a type of quality. Oh. Just, uh, just saying. Just JC. Saying. Harsh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>